Hi everybody, welcome back to my boredom, I guess. Um, decided this time to do a little bit more story time, I had a little bit of fun with that one, so I dug up some old pictures on some backup drives, and we're just going to go through this kind of one year at a time, and see a little bit of the history of the Pacific Northwest. So, in saying that, I'm going to start with 2009, which some of you weren't able to drive at that point, but we'll get to that later. And let's uh, poke soup through some things and tell some stories and have some fun. So, all right, you can kind of see my screen now. So, let's see if I got here. Um, this would have been on the way to the island, I think, at some point. Yeah, this would have been the Capital Drift event, 2009, so don't remember who was there or what was going on, so let's go through some pictures and some memories. And, uh, yes, this was a Porsche 944, I believe, with, I think this was LS swapped. I want to say this was LS swapped, but really cool car. It had wood brakes and an LS, and it was kind of fun. Um, he did all right. Probably not the easiest car to drive, but it looked like he was having some fun, and I don't know. No idea what happened to him or the car. Don't even know his name, so can't tell you much there. Um, this car might be recognizable to some people. I do not remember who was driving at this point. I'm pretty sure it's the same car. It's been around the block a few times, but again, I could be wrong. It's pretty rusty. It's a Toyota. Not much else to say there. So, I don't know why... I can't remember who was driving this. This was 11 years ago, so. Uh, typical S13 with an SR in it. Uh, I think his name was Serge. Mm, again, couldn't tell you. Um, kind of wet and wild day out at uh, Victoria, so. Not surprising. It is Victoria. Oh, this brings back memories. This was probably the first first time I ever drove the 180 anywhere. It's on a temp permit, so uh, I believe this was right when I would have registered it. Yeah. This was my 180 when it first came out of the garage. So everything was still intact. Looked all pretty. Uh, it was just an S13 SR and teen something coilovers. Uh, it's four log, had a welded diff, stripped interior. Really fun car. I mean, I drove it for 11 years, so had to be somewhat fun. Uh, this was probably one of the first R33s I think that I saw in Canada. Can't remember who owned it. I think this might have been a Ben car. Big Ben. Tall Ben. Uh, I haven't seen Tom, Tall Ben in many, many moons. Uh, I think it was Fraser Valley Imports was his company. And the white skyline was Mike Kwan. Pretty sure that's Jason DeBrung's hatch. Um, judging by all the zip ties and the wheels, I'm going to go with Jason's. Um... Those, I'm pretty sure those were Regan Masters on Mike's car. Somebody decides to mess with me. There we go. Um, oh, here's a cell block event. Who knows when that was, but... So this would have been probably mid-2009. Again, no idea who this is. I like this car. I don't remember why I like this car, but I like this car. Uh, there's Trent in the original Yellow Ducky. Uh, this was his coupe. It was a 4AG. Uh, I think it was a 4AG at that point. It might have been 20 valve. I really don't know Toyota Motors, so... Somebody will correct me, I hope, at some point. Uh, Wills West was where he worked. You can see in the back left corner there the window. Um, yeah, this was like... This was one of my favorite renditions of Trent's car. It was... Simple, easy, fun. It was good. Uh, this would be 
Ian in, in yeah 2009 this was Ian uh, I don't remember if this was the first or the second year that he was driving this car well this has been the second year it's got a cage in it now so yeah this was RB20 I believe uh, with a TD06 or something on it uh, I'm not sure at that point but I'll get Ian to chime in one day and we'll have a chat with him, I hope, maybe. Um, this was Pete Schroeder and another S13 SR. Uh, pretty great little basic little car. Uh, oh, let's see if I can spot some people I know here. So, there's... Uh, let's see if I get my mouse here. I wonder if you guys can see my mouse. Yeah, okay, you can. So the black R32 over here was Matt Roger. You can see Trent's car in the background there. Uh, I can't remember whose Levin that was. It changed hands a few times. That was Pat Lee's 1J or 2J car. Can't remember. Uh, I think Ian's car's over here. Oh, there's Josh. Oh, that's a long time ago. Um, who else can I spot here that I know? Everybody's got their backs to me. That's the problem. Anyway, the good old day is at cell block D. Uh, here we are at Evergreen. 2009. Uh, we used to do this. I don't know why we used to do this. This was like, this was tech. So you'd line your car up, park it up against the wall, and you'd kind of run through tech and then do your driver's meeting. It was kind of fun. Um... Really don't know. There's Laura Lee's car. Oh, black S14 back here. Uh, this guy tried to kill me a few times in the El Camino. Ian and Trent are back there. Yeah, so this is Laura Lee Connery. Um, she's a stunt woman out of Vancouver. Not sure at this point what this car really had done to it. I think it was an RB25 swap at this point. Uh, really kind of just a fun car. Uh, yeah, it was just a blast to drive. Um, it was, yeah, an RB25 on Microtech, I believe, at the time. Okay. It was a blast. They had lots of fun. Drove it for, drove the piss out of it for years. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened to it, but I think they might still have it. Uh, she and her boyfriend, or boyfriend Dwayne, um, they both do stunts and She's been in a whole bunch of great little movies. If you see a little blonde girl driving a car in an erratic fashion, it's probably her. Also, if you watch Power Rangers, she was the pink and the yellow one. Mostly the pink one, sometimes the yellow one. But, Power Ranger. Um, more with Trent. Yeah, I think this was the... Eh, pretty sure this was the... the yeah, it would be the 4AG in it. Ooh, Gleb. Who remembers Gleb? Haven't heard that name in a long time. Uh, this was SR, big wheels, big kit, big power. Uh, oh, <laughs> this will take me back. Andrew Coombs. Anybody remember him? Uh, I think last time I talked to him, he was still working on some coding stuff. He just kind of got switched gears in his life and had a family and uh, got away from drifting. His it's not this car. His next car has changed hand quite a few times. Uh, quite a few times, three, four now, and gone through a couple of different renditions of motor packages and transmission packages and stuff like that, and is now. Um, the new Hit Life Co car. So that's Brennan and uh, Kai Wallstrom. Oh. Tricked off is this would have been 2009, probably Earl driving this. So this was a car that Bob from Drift Office put together. Uh, I think literally with spare parts. So it was an SR car, or no. So the car he built for a customer. 
and then something funny happened and then the customer couldn't afford it anymore and it sat at drift office for a while and then he just kind of painted it put stickers on it and they turned it into the shop drift car but this was our own. Uh, I'm going to say there's at least five or six different people that drove this car at some point. Uh, can't remember all their names though. But we'll, uh, yeah, I'll think about it. More Ian and Trent. Oh, I will give somebody money if they can tell me who this guy is. Anybody? Yeah, this is Lucas Perez. Famously known for his Corollas in the Skyline. Drifting it. That takes me back. Uh, this... Uh, <laughs> this is what would eventually turn into Walker Wilkerson's Purple S13 that everybody knows. Well, maybe not anymore, but they did at some point. So this was Walker when he was... I'm going to say probably 16 or 17, 2009, yeah, 11, yeah, he would be in somewhere around there. Oh man, that's, yeah, that was before the cage, before, that was just big kit and wheels and drive the piss out of it. And then his brother Abbott would make all these cool videos about him driving it, which were awesome. I love those things. More Earl, Trent spinning. Yeah, definitely Earl. Hi, Earl. Pat Lee. I miss this car. Like, this was... Oh, I remember what happened to this car. This was the car that... Yeah, I think so. Pat was driving it on the highway one day out to do a parts run for work or something. And he was stopped in traffic and the guy behind him didn't stop. And he got rear-ended and split his head open on the roll cage because it had a stock seat in it in the front or the driver's seat and the ratchet and gear snapped and he smoked his head on the roll cage and split his head open really well he was in the hospital for a couple of days to clean up that up and then i think it took two or three years before he got cleared to go drifting again yeah that was a shame but he's back to 100 percent now and Doing better than ever with uh, is it certified audio now. He's got three or four stores in Greater Vancouver or Greater Valley area. If you need something, hit him up. Hmm. More Ian and Trent. Oh, right. The GTR days. This was probably the first GTR I ever drove. Uh, this was a. So at the time I worked for a company called Zedtune. I think this was our customer, Alex's car. Yeah, that would be it. Um, Alex was a super nice guy. He was a... He worked at the casino, and I forget exactly what he did, but... He was always doing really cool stuff, and had some really nice cars. This was his car before that. This was a 4.2 liter twin turbo uh, 350Z, which was affectionately known as the 420Z. Um... But he built this car. It made 800 and something wheel horsepower. It was fun. Um, his friend ended up buying it from him. Dave. Dave never ran it at 800 horsepower that I know of. Don't know if he still owns it, but... I think the most he ever did was, like, on low boost, he did about 450, which was plenty for that car. Uh, but I think that was the most he ever ran in it. It was just a fun, like, twin turbo, really cool, well-built car. And then he bought the GTR. Got really bored of it. He said it was too easy to drive. Like it just wasn't, I'm going to say, exciting enough. And I think he kept it for about a year, maybe. And then he built himself a twin turbo 370Z. And just continued on with that. That's kind of where I lost track of him. Oh, there is a face. So, for any of you in the Pacific Northwest that don't know who this is, you need to get out more. This is uh, Eddie Hughes. He's been probably involved with Nissans about as long as I have. 
Uh, I think I started with Northwest Nissans in like 2002. I think Eddie was about 15 at that point. But he came up to Canada actually a couple times for... It's going to date me. What was it called? Like Drift Fest or something? Uh, the Abbotsford Great X in 07, 06, somewhere there. That was a wild little event. It was a really shitty parking lot for drifting, but uh, the Falcon guys showed up with cars that basically could outrun anybody, but it was such a small course they didn't really get to. I don't know. Oh, Russell Peters. I think his name is Peters. Yeah. Anyway, Russell was a, I guess, like a really big force in drifting in the Pacific Northwest. He definitely helped get drifting started at Evergreen Speedway. Um, organized most of the events there, I'm going to say at least, until probably 2011-ish, 2010, somewhere there. Anyway, um... Yeah, I actually saw the other day, or last month sometime, he was selling off his uh, S14 shell. Trying to find a good home for it, so. Uh, it was a VQ-powered S14 that he started building probably around this time, so 2010, maybe. Uh, it just never really got finished when he started having a family and took on other hobbies and other things. And it's just how life goes. Okay, so this was a P1 car. Position 1, uh, I think it was Position 1. It was a local Pacific Northwest job. They did race cars mostly. Uh, they started to get into drifting a little bit. And they worked with uh, Phil Sue from Speed Lawyers or Diversity Law, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're in Washington and you get a ticket, call Phil. Trust me, call Phil. But anyway, um, can't for the life of me remember who was driving this car. Uh, it was just, uh, an SR, S14, with knuckles, I think, on it. So this was probably around the same time that these guys, I think, were friends with the guys at KP Race, which was another local Pacific Northwest shop that was big into drifting. Um, but yeah, for the life of me, I, I can't remember... Who was driving this car? Huh. I don't know. If you know, please tell me, because now I'm really curious. So this was... Oh, Tyler Archel. I always got his name wrong. <laughs> Tyler's been around the Northwest for drifting, anyway, for... I'm going to say close on 15 years now. This was his single cam KA car, and he slayed this thing. I don't know how. I, he, this thing was magical. Like it, he'd run the three eighths bank probably at like 90 PSI in the rear tires, but he would have run the three eighths bank with a single cam K car and just, yeah, he had fun. Uh, now he's got a E36, I think. It's been a while, but this was probably the most historic car of Tyler's era, I think, to me anyway. Uh, I ran this for many, many, many years. Oh, Mike Phillips. Uh, not much to say here. This was another sponsored car by Phil. Uh, Mike had a SR with a Garrett uh, GT3071 on it. Made, I think, around 400 horsepower. Um, Really fun car. This would eventually turn into his blue car, which eventually turned into the wrapped America flag car, which eventually turned into somebody's mom's car. And then I don't know where it went. But this was... I think he originally started putting this car together probably in like 2007. Um, so it's 13 years old and somebody's still driving it. Not too bad. Oh, Ricky. This is Ricky Henderson. Sometimes known as Ricky Bobby. This was probably the first, like, I'm going to say, 
big horsepower at that point, probably four ish hundred horsepower LS swap uh, that I ever saw up in person. So this was, uh, yeah, just an LS swapped S13 with a cage in it. And he was originally grew up racing circle track cars. Uh, I think racing at Evergreen. Uh, now, what's he got now? I don't know. He got into Porsches, I think, at some point. Uh, this car, no, I'll go later in years, and I think I've got more pictures of this car, but we'll come back to him. Ricky, Ricky Henderson. More Earl, more Walker. Check out those rear wheels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, the spring effect memories. Um, couldn't tell you who this was. I remember the car. Definitely remember the car. Um, had an SR in it with a good amount of power, I think. Couldn't tell you who it was, though. No. If anybody remembers, tell me. Oh. Another name I'm going to butcher here. Peter Funataki. Something like that. Uh, yeah. He started... Oh, this was... I think an SR car at some point. Yeah, I think it was an SR car. Um, young kid. I think he was probably... 19 or 20 at this point. Uh, young guy, anyway. Um, just having a blast with cars and then started getting more and more into modifying cars and car parts and stuff and started like a, an online brand and I can't remember what it was called. It was with him and his girlfriend and like, ah, I couldn't tell you. Somebody please remind me. Yeah, it might come to me at some point. Oh, so this is Rob Primo. And Ian Fournier's now wife, Felicia. Felicia's about 5 feet tall. Rob is 12, maybe 13 feet. Um, Rob was... I mean, I think he lives in California now, but... Hopefully he comes back to visit again. I love hanging out with Rob. He was good fun. Um, oh, Pete Schroeder. So his car changed a little bit from the last time we saw it at Subwalk. Uh, I think everything was still the same except the wheels and coilovers or something at this point. Yeah. But, uh, Pete ran a shop called Neptune D for I don't know how many years. Uh, I think he's since, he, yes, definitely has since gotten out of that. Lives in Seashelt on the island or somewhere now. Or, well, not the island, but in Seashelt. So, a ferry away from me. Uh, oh, Chris Jenner. Ah, here's KP Race. So, I think Chris worked for KP Race at the time. Uh, this was one of their cars they built. Um, pretty typical package they put together. It was a decently powered SR, cage, RPF1s, was, and uh, their set of knuckles, which... I had on my S13 for most of its life, I think about 10 years. Uh, no idea who this is. I remember the car. I loved the wheels. The wheels were my favorite thing ever, uh, but I couldn't tell you who drove the car. Yeah, that's, no idea. More Ian now with more Skyline Shop. So Ian works for the Skyline Shop. This is how he got the scowling. Uh, he worked for them, and then his uh, 240 or something got stolen, I think. And then he ended up buying this Skyline, which is the same car as the purple car that everybody knows now. It just kind of evolved more and more and more. So this was still, I think, the RB20. Uh, but yeah, new wheels from Wheels West and... I think this is right around the time he started to think about doing Pro-Am. Ooh. Okay, I... I can't remember who this is. This was a Mustang. I remember the car very distinctly. 
because it had a Kenny Bell supercharger on it and it sounded awesome. Uh, you could hear that whine from anywhere in the complex. Just full throttle supercharger whine. It was so cool. Uh, I can't remember who exactly it was. I want to say it was like David Nadelku or something. He had a white fox body that's probably more recognizable for anybody in the last 10 years. It was a white fox body on orange wheels, but we'll probably get into that uh, next round. Uh, couldn't tell you who this was. I remember the car. But I couldn't tell you who drove it. It was a beautiful S14. Just on some like 350 wheels and just no idea who it was. Ah, uh, yes. For anybody that, that questions why we have roll cages on the 3.8s when we're doing tandem, this is why. When you're coming off the 3.8s bank and you're chasing somebody and they spin, you're coming down a hill. So you can't stop. Uh, Earl found that out firsthand. Uh, that's Matt Rogers and his Skyline. Yeah, it was a pretty solid hit, that one. Yeah, munched. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, nope, it's giving me in. I know the car. Why do I know? Oh, that. Hmm. This is going to bug me because I, I know the car now, but I can't think of his name. Hmm. At least I think I do. I think this was the car that eventually got a C18 in it. Hmm. I don't know. Somebody's going to correct me, I hope. Oh, Victor Moore. I love watching Victor drive. He is, quite honestly, one of the most fun people to watch drive. He's just... It's 100% commitment every time. This was another KP race car. Um, I think this eventually became the car that he competed in FD in. Eh, could be wrong. I don't know. That's going to bug me too. Well, Team Insta Party. So this is Gleb again and Roland. Roland Gallagher is in the front there. Mm -hmm. Again, pretty two standard, like, S hard car, big wheels, and just a lot of throttle commitment and fun. Uh, these guys are always having a blast. But could not, for love of money, keep bumpers on the car. I repeat, could not keep bumpers on the car. Uh, oh, this is more Andrew Coombs. This must be a different Evergreen event. Um, yeah, this was, I think, when you got a little bit more power and a little bit more angle on the car. And then Photo Finish Media was his dad, Ken. Um, Ken also write, writes books. Um, Fran has got to talk to him. I love hanging out with him at the track. Uh, this was... Ah, there's the Media Pit. So this was his Formula Drift event. I think this. Hmm. It says Intec on the car. I should know who this is. But I don't. Yeah, this is when we ran Pro Am uh, on the same weekend as Formula D. So it could be, I think, Friday morning. No. Yeah, like it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Thursday, I think, was qualifying for Bro Am, and then Friday was competition. And then s Friday, Saturday was Farm of the Drift. I don't know, something like that. It was, again, 11 years ago. No, oh, this was. So this was, I like it, like working for Zed Tune in 2009. Uh, we attended Pink's All Out. So this was Andrew, 
Uh, he's one of our technicians, and this was his GTR. Uh, this car scared the crap out of me on many occasions. Uh, it made around, I think, like 500, no, 550, 600 of the wheel. Um, but it was a very quick, responsive, torquey 500. And I remember driving it back from the dyno right before this event. And the dyno is... Or not the dyno, sorry, the alignment rack. I was driving it back from the alignment to the shop, which was maybe two kilometers. And I went over a set of railroad tracks and kind of laid in the throttle a little bit. And the car literally lit all four tires up and walked over a lane. It scared the living shit out of me. I definitely never did that again. Uh, but this was... Yeah, it was a, uh, I think it was a pretty, like, basic, it was a built bottom end, cams, big, big, big cams, um, told me cams, uh, springs, retainer, it's like, kind of everything to go around, it was a pretty solidly built motor, uh, stock intake had, what was a like GT twenty eight sixties? I think they came in two sizes, and he had the bigger ones in this one. So these were like the dash sixes or something. Um, but again, made real, real good power, and it was really good responsive power. Mm, I think this was the first K swap I ever saw. So this was that pink soul out. This was a. Just a drag car that showed up to run pinks all out. Uh, but it was a really cool little setup. I have no idea anything about this car. Don't remember any of it. But I loved the K swap and the intake. That was my favorite part. Oh, yes. <laughs> so this was not what you think it is. Uh, this is the old Mercedes. If you look at the rear tires, you're going to see they're really quite large. Um, this had a Chevy V8 in it. Um, I think it ran tens. It was not slow. It was tens or elevens or something like that. Like it was definitely not what I thought it was going to be. And roll, rolled up the line and it just took off. Um, another one of, like, I don't know what it is about drag trucks, but I love drag trucks. So when I saw this, I mean, pretty retro little paint job, nice motor set up. Um, again, this was probably around, like, a 10-second truck. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. It was fun to watch. Uh, random things that show up and pinks all out. Uh, I guess a mid-engine car with a wheelie bar. It was fast. I remember that. That's all I remember. Uh, I think this was the only Super I saw there, which surprised me for the amount of Supers in the Northwest. Uh, this was just hanging out, kind of waiting for a turn. It was, oh, yes. When Nos used to hand out free drinks everywhere. Oh, so bad. Um, let's go around here. Uh, the guy sitting down here, uh, his name is Paul Urchuk. He's, um, there's a history behind Paul. Paul had, I yeah, still don't think still has it, but he imported an R32 years before, like, the 15 year rule came in. They literally cut the car in half. Shipped the chassis in pieces, shipped all the parts separately. Like, the, the, uh, what they had to kind of go through to make this car come together was wild. Uh, and then a couple years later, he did the same thing with an R34. I forget who he sold that to. It was sold as a kit car. Like, it was insured as a kit car. It still is. Um, and that was essentially how they got it in. Um... But then a couple of years later, like he had a, an S13, like, I don't know if he still has it or not, but um, very smart guy, um, 
always fun to talk to. I used to race, road racing cars and stuff like that. All kinds of stories. Uh, Sean was one of our technicians at Zedtune. We called him Miracle Child because he fixed things that shouldn't be able to get fixed. Magic, like weird wiring stuff, and he just randomly walk into it and find it. Uh, Big Mike was back here. Uh, one of the owners of Zedtune. Uh, Andrew, one of our technicians. Yuri. He ended up, uh, when Zedtune folded, he and Sean started a company called Monkey Nuts. Um, and they ran that for, I guess, four or five years, and then they folded that up. Uh, sold everything off and kind of went on to do bigger and better things with their lives. But that was a good day. I like that day. So this is the Speed Factory Racing Civic. Some of you might know what this car is. It's got a lot of history in it. And even more recently, it uh, history ended. It crashed. I'm pretty sure this is the same car. Uh, again, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the same car that uh, they crashed, I guess, what, two months ago? Oh, yeah. Test run? But, I mean, here it is 2009. Uh, um, these things were fast. Like, scary fast. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. This was a pretty famous little bug from Vancouver. Or, well, Mission. Um, he and another friend of mine... Carlos used to have a, a pretty good feud going, so this guy had this bug. At least I think, this, I think it's this car. Mm, no, maybe not. Mm. No, I think it was this car. Anyway, uh, Carlos has a, an NX2000 with an SR in it. It's now a crazy SR, but at that time it was an SR with a 3071 on it and made 400 horsepower. And, they just kind of kept upping the Andes. So, like, you know, one would add a bigger turbo, and then one would add slicks, and then... So they just, like, progressively get faster and faster and faster. Um, and then they both took a couple of years off and, like, rebuilt the cars. Uh, Carlos is in X2000 now. It's dumb. Like, really dumb. It makes... I'm going to guess around 900 horsepower on an SR20. No idea how. It's got a Mazworks built bottom end. It's got a VVL head on it. Giant turbo, I'm guessing. It's silly, and I love watching him drive it because it just sounds silly. And it puts a smile on my face, even. Uh, it's definitely another BC car. Uh, I've seen him drag race for years. I'd be terrified to drive this car. <laughs> like, no. There's, like, I'd be afraid I'd fall out. Oh, wow. I love, like, I love the car. And he goes to, like, the the curves in and all kinds of other stuff, but, again, would terrify me. Uh, I love this truck. Again, me and drag trucks just, no idea what it is, love them. I would love to see this style of drag truck on an episode of Roadkill. This would be cool. Yeah, this was our, one of our passes. So I think we ran like an 11... Hmm, I'm going to say mid to low 11s. Uh, I think the class they ended up going with was around 10 flat. So that was not us. Oh, more Paul. Yeah, this is a typical, like, Andrew Yuri picture. Um, this happened almost every day. Uh, yeah, put the put the street tires back on and loaded it back in the trailer, but I thought I'd take a couple pictures before we did that. Oh. So this was uh, one of our, like, summer barbecues at Zedtune. Uh, this was a, a customer's car. Really don't remember which about it, except it was turbocharged. That's about all I remember. Um, there's Matt from Zed Shop. I don't know if he still works there or not. 
I know. Uh, that red car is Josh Redding's car. Uh, that was... So, I mean, it was right around this era, I think, like, 07, 09-ish, where Josh and I really started, I guess, hanging out more. Uh, that was his red car. I had my 180 at the time. And, yeah, that was... This, like... So Josh went from a Z24 Cavalier to this Skyline. Um, night and day difference, of course. Uh, this car had, I mean, it had some quirks to it. it was a pretty old car, but I am still a little bummed that we weren't able to get the turbo back from when he sold the car, because the turbo had a whine to it that sounded like a supercharger. And we couldn't figure out what it was. It ran forever. I mean, like, it didn't eat itself. It went for, I think he owned the car for four or five years. But never ate itself, never did anything. Just blind. Like, it sounded like a supercharger. Hit the gas and was like, nee, nee. It's messed up. Uh, I wanted the turbo to figure out what was, how and why and what it was doing. But we weren't able to get the kid to give it, give it back when he took the motor. Um, yeah, this was that 420 car and Alex's old uh, GTR. Oh, you can see Josh in the background over here. And I think that's Ben. Anyway. Uh, this was, I think this was Gurge's car. So, oh, I don't remember his name on Instagram anymore, but... Uh, Gurge was, at this point, I think, 18, 17, 18, somewhere in there. Um, this was an automatic G35. I think his parents passed it down to him or something, but I can't remember the story. Anyway, young kid, he came and did, uh, like, his, uh, I don't think it was in high school. So I think he came, like, the last year of high school, he was doing a, like, a mechanic course or something, and he, he came to us to do like a three week internship, whatever. So we basically came to hang out in the shop and did some work on cars and I mean, we basically did like pretty basic stuff and just ran around and got parts for it and stuff like that. But really fun to have him at the shop. Um, he's got, he went from this to a Mark IV Supra, I think. Uh, I can't remember what happened to that car. And then he went to a, uh, an STI, I think like an 07, 09 ish, S yeah, somewhere in there. STI that's now on bags and makes 600 something horsepower. Crazy car, like beautiful show car, but um, well, started, I guess, like with this car. Some more of our customer cars. Don't remember anything fancy about these. Oh, there's my shitty little GTR in the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is right around that time. All right, let's see if we can find a picture of that. So, more fun. I think this Z32 in the front was Josh's. He runs a, a butcher shop in New West called Farm Town Meats. They make some great, they have some great meat. Um, but this was his toy baby, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it had big, big amounts of power and slicks. They had great fun. Um, I think it made like 600 something horsepower. It was silly, <laughs> but fun, like fun the most silly. Oh man, that was, yeah. Oh yeah. And then after this, we did our cruise up to, uh, uh, I think we were heading up to Squamish or Whistler or something for lunch, or Horseshoe Bay, I, I can't remember. I didn't make it. No. Because Galen's a dummy, and forgot to put a line back in when he was... Hmm, I forget what I was doing, intake manifold gasket or something? And I per forgot to put an oil line back in fully. I'm a dummy. So, 
You can see my lovely oil spill all the way up the highway. But I got the car back together and ended up, uh, I think it was November, very yeah, November. I decided to take a road trip out to Lethbridge to go visit my friend Brett. Um, I just needed a vacation. So took a week off and drove to Lethbridge in this car in November. Insert jokes here. Alberta in a skyline in November. Some animals stopped to say hi. Uh, yeah, this was one of the the roads I drove down into. Or, yeah, it was like just past uh, Golden or something. Uh, I don't remember. Well, oh, looks like we're at the end. So that was, I guess, the end of 20, 2009 for me. Um, well, I hope you've enjoyed my little history lesson here of Pacific Northwest and dumb stuff I did in it. Um, but yeah, leave a comment. Uh, tell me who some of those people are that I forgot their names of, please. Cause it's going to bug me. Um, if you have any questions or enjoyed it, leave a comment. Tell me things to improve on. I don't know. Say hi. Do something. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching my history lesson. And I'll probably do some more of these because I'm really bored because there's nothing to do since there's, we're stuck in COVID. Have a good day.